My name is Tara, and today we're going to talk about the prairie biome. Last time we talked with you, we talked about biomes and adaptation. Today we are going to talk about the prairie biome. Right here in Kansas. and some plants and animals. That are adapted to live here. The North American prairie formed thousands of years ago. There are seasons that are hot and seasons that are cold. and times when it is rainy and wet or hot and dry. 150 years ago, Kansas was covered in prairie. People talked about the sea of grass that covered the middle of the United States. There are three types of prairie in Kansas. The tall grass prairie, which is found in eastern Kansas. The mixed grass prairie is found in the middle of Kansas. And the short grass prairie is found in western Kansas. Tall grass prairie receives the most rain or snow. The mixed grass prairie receives less rain and snow. There is even less rain and snow in the short grass prairie. Let's look closely at pictures of these prairies. Do you notice any other differences between these three types of prairie? What do you see? Do you notice tall grass prairie has the tallest plants? Some tall grass prairie plants can be as tall as two of you. Mixed grass prairie has tall grass and short grass prairie plants, but even the tall grasses are not as tall as in the tall grass prairie. The short grass prairie almost looks like the grass in the playground at your school. Do you see trees? There are not many trees in any of these prairies. except near rivers or streams that run through the prairie. Why might that be? Well, one reason is fire. It takes a long time for trees to grow and they grow from their tops. So if a fire roars through the prairie every few years, the trees cannot grow very big before they are burned down. But what about all the other plants? Won't they be killed by fire also? They aren't. One way that prairie plants have adapted to their environment is having very long roots. Sometimes prairies are called upside down forests. Because most of the plant is below ground where you can't see it.
Stand up and stretch as tall as you can. These plant roots can grow up to three times as long as you. When the fire comes through, the tops of the plants burn, but the roots stay behind. And the roots have lots of energy stored for the plant to regrow. But these plants could not regrow if they grew from the tops like trees do. Because the tops are burned away by fire. Instead, the plants grow from just below the surface of the ground at the top of the root. so the plants can grow back after the fire has passed. For thousands of years, Native American tribes, for example, the Kanza, Wichita, and Pawnee here in Kansas, used fire to keep the prairie clear of trees and to remove all of the dead parts of plants. So bison would have delicious new plants to eat, and the tribes would have lots of bison to eat themselves. But in many places, Native Americans were forced off their land and the bison killed. Settlers came from other parts of the United States and tilled up the prairie or used it to graze cattle. So there is far less of the prairie ecosystem now than 150 years ago. But many tribes, such as the prairie band Potawatomi in Kansas, still burn their land today, keeping their prairie healthy. So what plants and animals live on the prairie? Grasses are an important part of prairie ecosystems. But there are other kinds of plants on the prairie. Some prairie plants are found in all types of prairies. Here is a plant that is found in the tall grass prairie. Here is a plant that is found in the short grass prairie. What kinds of herbivores are in the short grass prairie? Prairie dogs are herbivores. They eat plants. In our last lesson, we saw a prairie dog and talked about the color of its fur helping to camouflage it from flying predators like hawks. But what about other predators? Another adaptation of prairie dogs is that they live together in groups. and build networks of tunnels underground to live in. They will warn each other when a predator is near and hide in their burrows. Who wants to eat a prairie dog, you ask? Black-footed ferrets are carnivores that eat hardly anything else. What can you see about this black-footed ferret that helps you guess it is a carnivore? They also live in old prairie dog homes. So for black-footed ferrets to live, they really need prairie dogs. What about an animal that might eat a black-footed ferret? Coyotes are common predators in the prairie biome. Like prairie dogs, you may see coyotes in groups. Coyotes are mainly carnivores and eat all kinds of creatures that live on the prairie. 
This is a coyote in the summer. This is a coyote in the winter. Do you notice any differences? That's right, the coyote grows thicker fur for the winter. When it gets cold in the winter, we choose to put on a warm coat. But the coyote is adapted to grow a warm coat for winter. Even if the winters changed to be warm, coyotes would still have their thick fur coats for many generations. So, what have we learned about prairies? Remember? Why are there so few trees on the prairie? Fires are frequent? It doesn't rain that much? Grazing animals like bison, cattle, deer, and elk eat the tops of the young trees. Which of these animals are herbivores? Which ones are carnivores? Great job learning about the prairie biome. If you want to learn more, you can visit your library. Next time, we'll learn about another Kansas biome, the deciduous forest. See you in a month.